Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 11th Index on Censorship Freedom of Expression Awards. Please take your seats. This evening's ceremony is about to commence. Please welcome your host for the night, the Chair of Index on Censorship, Jonathan Dimbleby. Good evening and welcome to the annual Index Freedom of Expression Awards. Uh, you will notice, those of you who have been to them before, that we've changed the format this year. Can't, that means I can't see some of you, but I, if you want to, you can see me. Um, uh, we haven't changed the purpose of the evening, uh, but the format has changed, essentially because we wanted to involve more people in these awards, and we didn't want to feel that anyone would be excluded um, by being priced out of here. And we've been rewarded by a record attendance. This is our 11th such ceremony, and it's the biggest. I hope that in a tight schedule you will find this evening stimulating and enjoyable. There are some terrific speakers to come, the auction, um, and of course, most important of all, the awards themselves. Um, do let us know, incidentally, afterwards whether you think it works for you. Uh, I'm asked to remind you to turn off your mobile phones, but feel free to tweet in the freedom of expression way. <laughs> and, and if you wish to tweet, how can we stop you in any case? Um, the hashtag is Index Awards. I, I hope it won't seem complacent of me um, to report that our profile nationally and internationally has grown dramatically as more and more individuals come to appreciate what I think is the unique role played by Index on many fronts, and which may explain why so many people are here this evening. I want, first of all, to thank some of those who've helped make this event possible. Among them, Google, whose enthusiasm for our work is a really great boon. The Guardian, The Economist Intelligence, Intelligent Life magazine, and Beinman's law firm. We are very grateful for their continuing support and their individual sponsorship of our awards. Index would not be where it is and would not get to where it wants to get without the commitment, the generosity, and the involvement of those who support and fund our work. We are very grateful to the institutional sponsors who are listed in the program, and they will forgive me if I don't mention them all by name. I also want to thank on this occasion Sage, our publishers. They have transformed our editorial profile over the little over a year that we joined forces. They are heavily involved in our growing online service and are strongly supporting our other work as well, not least as we expand what we're doing into the United States. And tonight, they are the generic sponsors of the Index Awards. This year, the cause of free expression has been at the forefront of world affairs. To a degree that I suspect no one imagined, dictators across the Middle East who suppressed free, expressor, free expression for generations and who prefer to torture and to murder rather than allow their critics to speak freely have themselves been on the rack driven from power or confronting wave after wave of protest from those demanding this essential human right. We've seen brave young men and women and some of their elders as well taking to the streets armed only with mobile phones and social networking sites. They demanded change and at the heart of that, the freedom to express their hopes and aspirations without fear. Index has not only been telling that story, but we've done our best to facilitate the process, supporting, for instance, projects like Radio Kalima in Tunisia, training journalists in Yemen, and supporting the rights of journalists in Iraq to access information. Two previous winners of an Index on Censorship Freedom of Expression Award have been very often at the top of the news agenda this year, Twitter and WikiLeaks. Twitter has once again proved itself to be an extraordinarily important tool for the mobilization of opinion and particularly, of course, of protest. It's been a crucial tool for those demanding change. It is almost now impossible to silence the voice of protest unless governments take the crass and ultimately self-defeating 
step of blocking access altogether to the internet. Egypt tried that. The first time that any state has taken quite such drastic action. But, as you know, it didn't work. The internet had already provided the platform for dissidents in a flourishing blogosphere. YouTube disseminated videos of police brutality. It's impossible to exaggerate the importance of this new world of communication. As ancien regimes struggle and stumble and frequently tumble as they try to strangle freedom, the web and the mobile phone expose them to contempt and to ridicule. Tyranny is on the back foot as never before. Freedom of expression is more widely seen to be a sine qua non of a civilized 21st century society, at the very heart of every freedom that humanity cherishes. And then there is WikiLeaks. Hard again to exaggerate the impact of WikiLeaks on the fight to hold states and governments to account through freedom of expression. Nor is WikiLeaks the only website of its kind. Regional and specialist whistleblower sites are fast emerging. Of course, WikiLeaks sparks debate, and Index is proud to have been and to be at the heart of this. Very important questions about individual safety, national security, confidentiality, and privacy are brought dramatically to the fore and into focus by the power of WikiLeaks and others to disseminate raw data from the very heart of government and other powerful or indeed less powerful institutions. For my part, believing as I do that freedom of expression is a defining characteristic of a free society, I think that these important, competing sometimes and conflicting sometimes rights have to be at the heart of the debate about freedom of expression. I'm therefore very glad that Index is planning to hold a series of debates and discussions to explore these precious issues. There are also major issues much closer to home. Index has been deeply immersed in the campaign to re reform our antiquated libel laws, laws that have chilled the free speech of academics, of charities, of bloggers, and many others for far too long. I'm really proud that Index, at the helm, has been leading a broader campaign instrumental in changing the political climate that has resulted in the publication of the draft defamation bill. And in that context, I want to say to the Open Society Foundation a big thank you, not only for your core support, but for backing our libel reform campaign at a point when it seemed that David would never be able to fell Goliath. There are other emerging challenges. I'll give just one example, and I can give more. All mobile phone base stations now contain the inbuilt capacity to track every individual who has such a phone. The challenge that that poses to freedom of expression is self-evident, and it needs to be explored and challenged. I, 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 it will sound as if I have the temerity to say what I'm about to say, but I have it. It is only an organization like Index that can get across issues like this early, draw them to wider attention, and then lead the argument with expertise and measured confidence. I referred earlier to the, to the Arab world rising up against dictatorship. There is less good news from elsewhere. China and Burma continue to blacken their appalling reputations for denying free expression. Iran continues to execute those who try to use their right to free expression. More executions this year than last. An Iranian web designer is facing execution for, I quote, designing and moderating adult content websites, and, I quote again, agitation against the regime. Execution is his likely price if he is found guilty. In Belarus, the authorities have imprisoned 42 prisoners of conscience, many of them, of course, outspoken critics of the president, Lukashenko. In Azerbaijan, it's no better. The lawyer for Ainullah Fatulayev was a nominee at last year's Index Awards. It is now a year since the European Court of Human Rights ordered his release from jail. He is still there. His family have been told to shut up once and for all about his case, or, I quote, the entire family will be destroyed. And this, 
in a country which is a signatory to the European Convention on Human Rights. Of course, the challenges are not going to go away. They become more myriad and more complex. Freedom of expression in a variety of ways is imperiled everywhere. Eternal vigilance is required, constant attention, and a readiness to take up the cudgels to protect this fundamental human right. Next year, we, we celebrate our 40th anniversary, and we have a great deal planned for that year, which John Kampfner and Joe Glanville will tell us a little bit about later. Of course, since, as you will have imagined from what I've just said, since the Cold War, when we started, we have adapted and changed to meet new situations. The issues today uh, look, present themselves in some measure in black and white, but very often in gray as well. But we have never deviated from our core purpose to defend the principles and the practice of free expression everywhere. <laughs>